Hello, in this video we are going to have a very quick tour through the tool Gephi that we are going to use for social network analysis. Before we start the exercise explained in this video, I would like to ask you that you first download Gephi and follow the instruction for the installation of Gephi. Some of you, depending on the operating system, the type of computer you may have, and the type of Java version may have different requirements and needs to update or check the, check the Java version that your machine has. There are also some incompatibilities between different versions of Java and Gephi. Uh, well, that's one of the joys of having open source software while, while the, this piece of technology that we are going to use for social network analysis is open and um, source and publicly available to anybody. There are certain issues that we always need to deal when we are install, installing. So I hope you have all, already overcome that problem and that you can now continue with the uh, exercise that we are going to have in this video. So for this exercise I suggest that first we are following the examples that are provided in their course resources. So those examples are uh, available in the course reading so for the edX users you can easily locate them in your edX platform and they are also available in the pro solo credential uh, available for this week. Uh, so, in these two examples, you will see that there are two separate files. Each of these files can be imported and loaded into Gephi for further analysis. So, all you need to do is to say open and go locate the folder in which these two examples are and then import it. So, let's go first with example one and import it into Gephi. Both of these examples are created in such a way to be undirected. Of course you can also import them as directed but the overall size of the network and the types of results that I'm going to show uh, in your analysis will be different. So let's assume that these two networks are undirected in the same manner as they are shown in the slides that we follow throughout the presentation. So the first thing that you are going to notice is although I am using the identical example that is provided in the slides and the video presentations that we use for the introduction of social network analysis, in this video you can see that the first basic layout of this visualization is not the same. So what I am suggesting you to first to check out is to go to this component which is called layout and in the layout you can experiment with different types of visualization of graphs. Uh, through my experimentation with this example, I found that uh, Yin Fan Hu was the probably best example of, of the layout that could be applied for our network. You can also see that this network, visu as visualized as now, is probably the most similar to the representation that we used in the slides. Of course, there are many other of these uh, different visualizations and depends on the data set and depends on what perspective you want to show, some of these different uh, layouts may work better in some other cases. In some cases when you are dealing with uh, bigger data sets, this particular data set, uh, this particular layout can be best for you and I'm typically using it. However, for this particular data set that we are using now for this small example, it's, it turned out that you in fun who um, proportional or in fun who just the basic algorithm work equally well. All right, so once you have visualized that, the next thing that I'm sure you would like to do is that you actually zoom bit this uh, whole example in. So that let's go there. You can identify here on this uh, lower uh, bottom right corner uh, uh, this small icon. When you open this icon you will see that the first uh, tab here is global. So just try to play there with this slider and you can zoom it in and zoom it out uh, this icon, uh, this whole network. And the second thing is then uh, here you can also ch change the shape of this diagram. The next thing is you can also play with the uh, color and the shape of uh, different uh, edges that you have in the network. So you can also uh, play there and final thing that might be interesting in this case is that you can also turn on uh, the, the labels or the names of the actors in this network that we are presently experimenting with. Uh, there are uh, of course situations like this one where this uh, labeling may be useful 
and may be still visible. However, when you are dealing with networks of several hundreds or even several thousand of actors in your network, they may not be uh, that suitable to, to be shown in the network. But let's for time being turn them off and let's continue to experiment with some of the network analysis uh, that we learned in this course. So the first network analysis that I'm going to introduce here is available through this statistics. So when you open this uh, tab on the right hand side of your window statistics, you can first compute degree. So it says average degree, but the moment you say average degree, it will also compute the value of every single node in your network. So it will also show the distribution of the degrees. And finally, it will also show what is the average degree for the network. In this case, we can see that the average degree is 3.6. And so this is the value that means that each node in the network on average has 3.6 connections. But of course, different nodes may have different uh, degrees. So how we can actually become aware or see what is the value of degree for each of these different nodes? Well, there are a few strategies how you can do that. One strategy is that you go to the data laboratory tab here. And in that tab, you will then see each of these nodes as well as each node's uh, degree. So you can see that for each node's degree that we are having in this network, we can see what was the value of the degree. Okay, so let us now return back to the visualization that is done by clicking or pressing this button, which is called uh, overview. So how we can now visualize some of these network measures and see that we can, for example, differently color our uh, nodes in the network or maybe even size based on the values of their degree. So to do so, you need to go to this now tab on the left hand side, which is called partition. So the first thing is you will see there is a drop down box here, which is empty. So the first thing we need to do is we need to refresh it. All right. So once we refresh that box, we can see that there are there is the value degree. So for partitioning, generally, you can do this and based on that, the nodes with the same number of degree values they will be colored differently. So you can follow these different colors and uh, their representation here. So this is one way to do that. So in this way, for example, the nodes with uh, red color, meaning that they have three, the value three, they will be shown uh, here on the diagram. And the similar based on these degree values, those are the discrete value items for each of these uh, values uh, are shown and visualized differently in the diagram. There's another way to uh, do and visualize your network is, is if you go into the ranking part and select nodes. Once you have selected nodes, you can then choose degree. And then once you have chosen degree and say apply, you will see that these nodes will be color differently and the darkness of the color of the node will represent the uh, higher value of degree. That is to say the measure that we use to color our nodes. Of course, you can also experiment with different types of splines and uh, uh, the different ways how that can be colored. But nevertheless, it's important to remember that this is the way how you can visualize based on the color. Before we continue the visualization, uh, I would suggest that we first do something else. I first suggest that we go return back to our network and to compute between us centrality. So between us centrality is computed when we are computing uh, diameter. This is actually not surprising given that in the computation of between us centrality, closeness centrality and a few other measures, uh, the network diameter, the measure that we also introduced in our slides and videos, is introduced. So I'm suggesting you that just you run network diameter. Once you are asked here network diameter, you will be by default selected undirected graph and you can choose whether you would like to normalize or, or not. Normalization means whether you would like that between a centrality and all these other three measures uh, are presented in the on the scale uh, zero to one or you would like to just simply have them all uh, represented with the values as they are. This normalization zero to one means that there will be found the maximal value 
of between a centrality and then all these other values will be uh, scaled that is to say they will be divided by that maximal value between a centrality of a, of a node in the network and that's how we are getting this normalized centrality measures so let's not go now with these normalized let's go with the actual values of the centrality measures and see what we can get all right again similar as done before we are getting between us centrality and closeness centrality as done for um, degree centrality. There's another measure here which is called eccentricity. We haven't introduced it, but it's quite similar to closeness centrality except it's a discrete value. It's always an integer number and means basically what is the uh, highest number of hops that a node needs to have to reach to any other node, meaning that's a geographic uh, center of the network. So once we computed these three measures, if you return back to the data laboratory tab, you will see that three new columns were added, eccentricity, closeness, and between us centrality. All right, so let's go now back to the overview of our network. And for that overview, let's now click on this like a small diamond in the ranking tab of the network. When you uh, hover over that uh, small diamond, you will see the size weight will be uh, something that will be shown as the uh, value. So what I'm suggesting you here, let's now choose between a centrality is used to size the nodes in the network. And I'm suggesting you that you can play with different numbers, max size, but I'm suggesting you to say enter value like 100 here to see what will happen. So it means basically that the uh, based on the values of between a centrality, the maximal size of some of these nodes will be 100, between 1 and 100 points. And they'll be depending on the values of between a centrality. All right. So once we apply this between a centrality, you can see that we visualize these nodes and they were sized based on the between a centrality. But you can see that this network presented as this way is really not that helpful. So let's try with some smaller number, like 30 perhaps. And you can see now that there are uh, differences in the size of our nodes. The node which has the largest value of between a centrality is, in principle, the highest node here. And the question becomes, well, how do we know which node is that? There is one possibility. You can right click on that node and you can go select in data laboratory. That means the following. Once we have done this, so select in data laboratory and you return back to data laboratory that particular node will be selected and for a good reason because this node had the highest the, between a centrality as we also showed in our uh, video presentation before so this is Liz and Liz has this between us centrality as the highest number let's return back again here there's another possibility how you can see which node was that one with the highest uh, centrality we can again turn on the labels back. So once we turn the labels back on, we can again see that's Liz with the highest number of degree uh, of between a centrality. So this is the way how you analyze networks and especially how you analyze networks when you are interested to compute some of these uh, major measures. Of course, we can also compute uh, graph density as we also introduced and again it's fairly simple it tells us the same number as we also saw in our presentation it's 0.4 the value that is to say 40 percent of the entire potential of this network to be connected there's one more thing we computed these measures that are at the level of nodes and at the level of the entire network like the entire network was network diameter and graph density and in the level of individual nodes we had degree we have also uh, closeness and between us centrality. Someone may ask, okay, this is cool, we all computed, but then how we can now experiment with some of these measures and connect it, uh, say, with the tool for data analysis, such as a Tableau that we introduced in weeks one and two, or a Rapid Miner that Ryan Baker is going to introduce in weeks uh, uh, five and six. So that's also fairly simple you can now export this entire table from the data laboratory in comma separated value files or some other separated files and then you can import this file into Tableau 
you can import it into any tool that deals with spreadsheets or you can import into different statistical analysis tools such as R, SPSS, uh, SAS or some other tool that you may have access to use. R for example is open source and it can be easily accessed. At this point we finished some basic introduction into Gephi and how to compute some of these basic measures. I would encourage you now to go into the hands-on activities that are provided in the course materials to import these examples and you start uh, performing these types of analysis as shown in this video. I would also then encourage you to perform further hands-on activities on a bigger data set that we've provided in the study and more importantly to share your experience with others. In addition to my video here that I recorded with Gephi, I am also going to refer you, and you can find that in the resources available in the course materials, to some other YouTube videos which can um, allow you for additional insights into ways how Gephi can be used for visualization uh, and performing some of these types of analysis. Some of those examples are also offering opportunities for you to, for example, download your Facebook network or your Twitter network. Based on that, we also created some assignments that you can perform. But in a nutshell, these types of analysis and the functionality that I showed in this video will get you going very far. Of course, for those who would like to have something more advanced, they are welcome to explore additional functionalities and even better, they are more than welcome to share it with everybody else through edX discussion forums, through ProSolo or other social media that is used in this course. Thanks very much.